First, let me thank Senator Menendez for his leadership on S-3305, and I hope that his request will be granted. As Senator Murray has said, and Senator Menendez has said, and Senator Nelson has said, it's basically whose side you're on. Who should pay for this disaster? Should it be the taxpayers of this country? Should it be the small business owners whose livelihood is now at jeopardy? Should it be the property owners who are going to suffer damage? No, it should be BP Oil and its affiliates. And that's what the Menendez bill does. It places the responsibility on the appropriate party. BP should pay. Now, there are many reasons why BP should pay. As Senator Menendez points out, they're profits. Six billion dollars profits. That's not revenues, that's profits in the last quarter. But let me just give you a, another reason. BP and its exploration plan that it presented to the uh, Mineral Management Service, the MMS, to get an environmental waiver stated, and I quote, unlikely event of an oil spill as having little risk of contact or impact on the coastlines and associated environmental resources. Unlikely event, little risk of contact, and they relied upon proven response technology, that is these blowout preventers. They were fail safe, according to BP Oil, and yet MMS showed that the blowout preventers had failed or otherwise played a role in at least 14 accidents. And there was little information about the blowout preventers at 5,000 feet of water. And that was used to avoid an environmental, full environmental review. We have an environmental disaster, and BP should be held fully accountable for many reasons, not the least of which is the way that they misrepresented the environmental risk to the public and to the regulators. But let's talk about the extent of the damage. BP is continuing to underestimate this damage because they don't want the public to fully understand the extent of the damages. First, they tell us 1,000 barrels a day and then 5,000 barrels a day. The experts tell us that the methodology used by BP oil is not reliable. And it should have given us a range, not a specific barrel amount. And we had the people at Woods Hole prepared to come in and do a real assessment without jeopardizing BP oil's efforts to stop the flow. And BP doesn't let them do that because they don't want the public to know exactly the extent of this damage, as Senator Nelson has pointed out. Using dispersants, which is the, 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 which is a, the least, uh, which is a better option, but still not a good option. The oil is going to stay in the oceans and, and give us dead zones. It's going to cause additional damage. So it starts with the Menendez bill. It starts with holding BP oil responsible for all the damages that it's caused through its misrepresentations and the way that it's handled the spill. But I hope it will continue that we can reenact a moratorium, particularly for the area that I represent in the Mid-Atlantic, which is so environmentally sensitive that if we have the spill in our area, what it could do to the Chesapeake Bay and Assateague Island. So, Mr. President, I urge my colleagues to move forward today on the Menendez bill. Let us get the consent necessary to make sure that everyone understands what BP oil says it will do, it will do. Pay for all the damages that it has caused. But I hope that won't be the last action. I hope we also will reimpose the moratorium for offshore drilling, at least at this point, until we know that we can do it safely. And in my area, I hope that the moratorium will be permanent.